Hello, my name is Jonathan, and today we're going to be going over computers and how they deal with architecture and design school. So a lot of times we'll be uh, asked whether or not we are using a computer that's whether a laptop or a desktop, or sometimes whether or not we should get a MacBook or if we should invest in a PC. All right, so for the first question, most people will ask whether or not I should get a Mac or should I get a PC? And while Macs right now are in a very good position, they actually offer quite a lot as a computer. And for those who are going to art school, uh, I would heavily recommend you get a um, Mac because they're one easy to transport and also have the uh, stuff that you're required to have for a computer at that point. However, for if you're going into design or architecture, I would strongly recommend you do something other than a Mac. Um, a Mac itself uh, doesn't have the right um, software and stuff to run a lot of the programs that you'll be using in architecture or design. For example, if you're using Revit or if you're using something uh, like some AutoCAD based softwares or even if you're using Rhino, those stuff don't necessarily run as well or even can run in Mac softwares. So the thing, second thing that comes into mind is what type of display or monitor you should get. So displays and monitors are these things you see in the back. And they're also basically the computer screens that you use. And a lot of times you're going to be wanting to invest in something a little bit more high quality for, especially if you're doing design, uh, is that you want to have something that has a high amount of pixel density. Uh, for example, most likely you'll be wanting something more of a UHD or around a 3840 by 2160 uh, pixel ratio. Uh, well, pixel ratio being 16 by 9. Um, so there's also three different types of screen. Uh, so there's TN, uh, VA, or IPS. So you're going to be wanting to look for something that's IPS based. Uh, they usually offer the best amount of colors and they also offer the highest resolution, the clearest contrast ratios. So another thing that usually is also very strong indicative of how you will be using the computer is its uh, graphical power. And with the graphical power, you usually want to invest in a designated video card. Um, so with video cards are the things that causes you to be able to render or be able to like construct crazy ideas within your computer and using like mainly a lot of like design software such as Revit and Rhino uses a lot of graphical power through the video card. And so with these video cards, it's like what type of video card should you buy? Video cards are a little bit more confusing. They're all over the place. They have these random numbers that people get confused by. And so what you're probably going to be looking for is one of the newer video cards that come out. Uh, and don't go for the highest ones, like a 1080 or something, because simply they're not necessarily very affordable and they don't necessarily offer the best bang for your buck. So you're going to be wanting to look for something more of a GTX uh, 1060 or a GTX 1050 um, or even a little um, the last generation, such as the 960 or a 950. These will offer enough um, graphical power so that you can get through it and they should help out with basically all your rendering stuff and do it pretty like nice. Um, the only problem is some people, um, very, a lot of schools recommend that you get a Quadro and Quadros while they are really high tech and they're really like fancy stuff for animations and uh, rendering. They don't necessarily, they're, they're way too expensive for what you're getting for it. It's basically, it's better for you to invest in a graphics card that is um, a gaming graphics card rather than investing in a Quadro simply because it's more for your dollar spent. So another thing that comes up is uh, CPUs. And while well, CPUs are not really defined, they're the central processing unit is what they're actually referred as. Um, but you want to invest in something a little bit higher spec than what you normally would. Uh, so avoid like some of the smaller CPUs such as like the Pentiums or the i3s and go for something a little bit higher like an i5 or i7. I heavily recommend that you get an i7, um, even more than i5. If you already have a computer that has an i5, that's okay. But an i7 is really what you want to go for because that offers you to be able to multitask, be able to uh, process things a lot faster. One thing in design school is um, a lot of times you're going to be rendering something and you don't want to spend an entire day rendering. There's times in which I rendered something for more than two or three days straight on a single computer. Um, and basically you want something a little bit faster so you can get back into the flow, back into your work and keep designing stuff rather than being like bottlenecked at a specific point just waiting for something to come out. So some other things you want to consider whenever you're getting a computer is the I.O. or like the stuff that's usually around the computer, like for example USB ports and an audio jack. 
So some of the things you want to consider is you always have to have an audio jack just so you can listen to music and all the things else that are on the computer like videos and stuff. Because when you're designing stuff that everyone's going to be listening to music, you're going to be basically subscribed to Spotify and just trying to get through all your projects on time with deadlines. And also what you want to look into is an SD reader. Um, so those are little chips that you find in like, uh, for example, your camera. And because also in design school, you'll be taking a lot of photos and it's very good to have that uh, flexibility without having to have an adapter. Um, so I found that very useful whenever I was using my computer. Uh, some other things you want to think about is the type of USB ports you want to have. You want to have uh, at least a USB 3 just so whenever you're doing Photoshop work um, that you're not bogged down by waiting for just a Photoshop file that's a few gigs to move between your, uh, your computer and a USB flash drive or something like that. Um, some other things you want to definitely recommend is um, uh, something like an Ethernet port. Ethernet ports are really good and frankly internets are not always that great at schools, not always out like perfect. So you always want to have like that wired connection so you can do things really fast. Uh, some other things is like an HDMI port because um, sometimes you'll be presenting things on a screen or you want to go into a meeting and be like, oh, this is what I want to show for um, like show people what I did. So having that ability to just directly take your computer and port it onto a screen and outside, that's a very useful fact. So overall, um, like, I wouldn't recommend that a person who's going to architecture or design uh, invest themselves into a Mac. And so we're left over with PCs and whether or not you want a laptop or a desktop, um, that's really uh, up to you. But I wouldn't go with a desktop, even though it's a little bit cheaper to build and usually you can get a little bit higher quality, simply because whenever you're in architecture school or in design school, you usually work in something called a studio. And that studio culture is very important. You want to be able to socialize, you want to be able to talk with the people next to you because that creative process of talking to people in like exchanging ideas, you want that to be there. You want that to be open. So you shouldn't necessarily invest in a desktop at home because then you won't be able to creatively discuss things with other people next to you. You'll stuck, be stuck at home working on the same project that you've been doing. Well, if you were in studio working on something, the flexibility of changing your ideas and improving them is drastically higher. Um, some other things you want to think about is um, when students go into colleges, they usually want to look for something light, and that's probably going to be very unfortunate for someone going into architecture or design because most of the computers that follow these qualifications are very heavy. Uh, also, you'll probably be stuck next to an outlet for a majority of the time because you'll be charging your stuff. But in honesty, it's not too bad um, simply because the stuff that you need is there and you don't want to be um, basically tied down to one location. Uh, some other things that um, happen is most people want to invest in these tablet computers such as the Microsoft Surface or something like that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it just simply because the processing power and the graphics on there, while they're good for having a tablet factor, they're not very good for designing or using that type of software. So hopefully this has helped you out and i um, really glad if I could offer anything to you guys. Uh, frankly, there aren't a lot of videos about architecture and how to choose a computer for that. Um, overall, at the very end, I would recommend something like a gaming, a gaming computer because gaming computers offer almost everything that is used for that and how it should be. Uh, gaming computers are pretty much, um, they're built to run the very programs that we're using. Uh, for example, like game designers use Maya or they use um, Rhino as well. All these things that they use, uh, for example, also 3ds Max that we designers use. We, use it, we as architects and designers such as like car designers, we all use that type of stuff. And running it on the same systems is very useful. So hopefully this has helped you out. Um, like and subscribe, I guess. <laughs> New to this, if you have any feedback or any commentary that will help me better myself, uh, free feel to leave it down below, and thank you.